your neurology regulates the intensity that you can put out in this life. And one way you could think about that is your neurology regulates your intensity of experience. Happy Wednesday. Welcome back to Morning Coffee. I'm your host, Rick Alexander. You guys can follow me at Rick Alexander underscore or at the Morning Coffee podcast on Instagram. You know, a couple years ago, I had somewhat of a rock bottom moment. And in that moment, I sort of felt as if I got sort of broken open and I was awakened to different things in my life that I realized that weren't important to me anymore. And so I had a profound shifting of, of my value system and my structure, and it improved my life in such an extreme way. And I look back and I, I realize so much of that growth took place because of coaches that I had hired and programs that I took. And just I really took the opportunity to invest in myself and, and figure out what I wanted for myself out of this life. Like I, I hit this moment where I didn't know anymore what it was all for. And so I had this experience and I learned along the way and I sort of learned how to put myself back together with the help of coaches and mentors and guidance. And then I started the Clarity Academy where I teach the principles that I used to sort of put my life together, figure out who I really was and what I really wanted. And the next Clarity Academy is kicking off October 16th and the registration is live today. And so if you're interested in taking that course, it's a 12-week intensive course. You can do it with one-on-one coaching or with group call coaching, Uh, but it's a real deep dive into what's going on with you. And you're going to have to ask yourself some tough questions. But if you're interested in that course, you have any questions about it, feel free to hit me up. Again, at Rick Alexander underscore, probably be the best way to do that. Today, I'm going to introduce three kind of points, and then at the end, I'm going to attempt to sort of tie them all together and make a main point. So the first thing that I want to say is something that became clear to me in the last decade or so is in pop culture, one of the things that humans are really fascinated by is artificial intelligence, because AI is it's improving at a pretty steady rate. And it's improving so much, you can tell, I mean, that every iPhone that comes out is a little bit better, right? And if you listen to Joe Rogan, that's one of the things that he's been talking a lot about in the last decade is this idea that we're all sort of racing towards singularity. And and as I understand it, what singularity is, is a point where computers get so smart, you know, the artificial intelligence gets so smart that it's able to train and replicate itself. And at that point, it will be like exponentially, it'll be exponential growth that we will no longer have control of. And that's a fascinating thing that people think could happen in our lifetime. And and as fascinated as I am by that, I'm also intrigued by the idea that, one, I don't think that any kind of artificial intelligence would exist in this world. That's just me. Like, why would it exist in time and space? I think it would create its own dimension, like its own internet type thing. Uh, It doesn't make sense to be all clunky and exist here. But Uh, That aside, I also think it's interesting because we don't know the human very well, right? Like if you look out, most people don't know themselves at all and they definitely don't know the world, right? They they have a point of view and that point of view has them more than anything because they don't have the freedom to pivot from it and they're things come up that are really hard to deal with for a lot of people and they don't know they don't have the tools to deal with them and so they repress them with alcohol and all these things and so you have this like where people don't really know themselves and then in I feel like in a lot of the brain science research right now like we're realizing like even at the top level of intelligence or the top level of the field we'll say in brain science is that we don't know the brain well even at that level right like we're still finding out things about ourselves One of the things Danielle and I were talking about the other night is how crazy it is that there's a placebo effect that, you know, any time a drug is going to try to come to market, when it's in trial, it has to get measured against the placebo. And the placebo is a fake pill for those that don't know, understand that. And the thing to really understand is that most pills actually fail. And so as it turns out, most drugs that we make aren't better than our own mind at healing some things, right? Now, that's not the case with things like tumors and things like that, but there's a lot of, there, there's a lot of different uh, ailments that we're realizing can be healed with our mind, clearly, because a lot of drugs uh, don't have as good of a success rate as the placebo does in trials. And so, and so the, the mind is at least strong enough that we absolutely have to account for it every single time we want to introduce a solution to the human condition. Okay, so that's, that's something to really think about. Like, how crazy is it that that's true? 
Okay, and so that's going to be the first point. Just sit with that, this idea that we really don't know the, the limits of our own bounds, right? And, and if you remember, one of the things I talk about is potential is limitless as well because potential is like almost the gift that reality gives, it, gives you as you engage with it. And so as you like move out into the world, then the world gifts you with more potential. It's like right now you might not be able to run a marathon, but if you train for a 5K, the gift you get from that 5K is more potential. So you could possibly get to a marathon or an ultra or whatever, right? Right? And you don't, that's why you don't actually know your potential. So you have no idea how incredible your life could be because it, it takes an active engagement with it. And on top of that, we don't know the sort of powers of the mind anyway. Okay, so that, that's the point. So then the next point is, if you remember, I've talked a lot about flow states. And the reason I'm even doing this show is one of the whole modules in the Clarity Academy is on how flow states occur in our lives. So if you remember, one of the things I've talked about in a flow state is, it occurs when you're rooted in what you know and you're, you're simultaneously exploring that which you don't know. And so I get in a flow state when I write because I understand the craft of writing and what I'm doing and at the same time I'm exploring concepts that I don't quite have my mind around and so it puts me in a flow state. Same thing with things like surfing or biking. You're, you, if you're really good at the sport, then you have an understanding of it so you're rooted in what you know and you're also pushing through time and space. And so you reach this flow state and it's one of the things that we can tell is that flow state is sort of the optimal way for humans to be. And, and because you're almost pulled outside of time and space and you have a heightened capacity for making decisions and thinking, uh, and you're sort of not happy or sad. And so there's also like you, you're sort of outside of the human condition in a way when you're in a flow state. So it's something like that's the optimal way for humans to exist. And if you take that recipe, you think about that's also how we evolve our species, right? That's why every generation, the world gets a little bit better and it gets a little bit safer. Even if the media won't tell you that, right? Like our world is profoundly better than the one that our parents grew up in, right? And we're learning and we're evolving our species. And the way we're doing it is because we're rooted in what we know and we're also exploring the world. And so we're pushing into new cures and you're seeing more social justice because we're pushing into that. And then maybe we go a little too wonky in one direction when we're pushing for certain things, right? And, and so there's an optimal way for humans to be, and that's the next point, is that you're, you, it's a slow evolution, and that's why things take time. Like, real change takes a full generation of people pushing for it. Okay, so that's the second point. And then the third point, I did an episode on this a long time ago, on the neural governor. So exercise physiology types have this idea, and it seems that the field is a little bit split on it. Some believe in it and some don't. I'm one that does, um, and I'll tell you why. But the neural governor is, they, they can't pinpoint where in the brain this is happening, but it's regulating the intensity. And so it's like, so think about it with CrossFit or with sprinters. So the neural governor you have to actually train it. And the way you train it is you have to ram up against it. And so, you know, that's why I want, sometimes people say you, when you get good at CrossFit, it actually doesn't hurt less, right? Because your capacity to inflict pain on yourself gets greater. And that's that neural governor growing. And so I think what we're seeing is that your neurology regulates the intensity that you can put out in this life. And one way you could think about that is your neurology regulates your intensity of experience. Okay, and so here's how I tie all these things together. Our lives tend to grow stagnant at times, and then sometimes they're in chaos, right? And so if you think about the flow state recipe, if you're not exploring the world, you're going to feel stagnant. And so if you're not exploring some way like in your job or your relationships and they're not evolving and they're not going somewhere, then you might feel stagnant. And so you're not in that optimal place for the human condition. But if you go too far into what you don't know, and so that you feel like you're in chaos, that happens when you get fired or when you break up from somebody or like in a relationship or something. All of a sudden now you've gone too far into the world you don't know and so that you're in chaos. And so what I would like to propose, the way that I've been conceptualizing my life in the last, I don't know, six months or so, maybe, yeah, about six months, is that I can use my brain to regulate my experience in a way. So I can, I can learn, I can train myself to live optimally, right? To root myself in habits and routines and things that make me feel centered. And, and that's like the, the world I know. And then at the same time, writing the book and teaching clients, I'm, I'm like finding activities that feel like there's a lot of growth in them. So I'm constantly pushing into the world that I don't know. And if I start traveling too much and I get too far from my routines, I'm like, oh no, I'm going too far into chaos. 
And so in your life, whether you feel like you're in chaos or whether you feel like you're stagnant, it's like you can course correct yourself and you can use your brain to sort of set some sort of governor there where you train yourself and you, you set your neurology to live optimally. And I think the way that you would do that is you can create habits and routines for yourself if you feel like you're in chaos that can start to bring you back. Like if you just moved into a new place, start creating some tradition. That's why humans have tradition because it creates psychological safety and from there we can explore the world. But the world has to be safe in some way. And so create that for yourself if you're in chaos. And if you're not in chaos, if you're, in, if you're stagnant, then you need adventure. And all of the drugs and alcohol and all of the things that we use instead of adventure, it actually mimics the brain chemistry, what's happening when we, because we were wired to, to be somewhat adventurous and everybody's to varying degrees, but there's a level in everybody that's, that you're still human, right? And so you have the human condition to deal with. You know, one of the beliefs for people in chronic pain, and I know I'm going a little longer today, but I'm going to wrap this up. One of the beliefs for people in chronic pain is that Everybody's always in pain, except your brain has a natural opioid response. So it basically, your brain has a natural response that dims your pain. So everybody's in pain from all the injuries you've had and the injuries you have now, right, to a, very, to a variant degree. And one of the things that people are starting to believe and starting to find out through new neurological research is that your brain's capacity, like when you see people with chronic pain but they can't figure out the reason, one of the things they're starting to think is it's actually just the circuitry in your mind. Because remember, your neurology regulates your experience to some degree. And so what they're starting to believe is that your neurology is, uh, it's off in some way for people in chronic pain, I mean. And so I just think it's so fascinating. We're realizing these things about ourselves, like we're kind of programmable and we can get off of program pretty easily. And then that, it just takes a little bit of a shift, right? For your psychology to be off one degree or the other for things to get a little bit difficult for you. But perhaps you can train yourself to live optimally and you can just look at your life and bring it back. That's one of the modules is, is a whole process for doing that in the Clarity Academy. It's something I'm really fascinated by because I'm realizing a lot of people that have problems with their lives, it's like, well, you could clean this up with lifestyle design. At, at a minimum, you could start there, you know, and, and that's one way to start anyway. But I've gone on long enough. I hope you guys have an amazing hump day. I love you. We'll talk to you tomorrow on Morning Coffee. Well, I'm a poor man, I feel no pain I struggled half of my life, I'm going against the grain But I think I guess I only get one chance at this I'm going to give a second, I've got, I've got to live another second Another win by, I killed another second minute I'm a waste of my life, I'm going to spend my weekend I was doing something with myself But playing with the cards from the deck I'm dead I got the full ticket gas I'm gonna say goodbye to everybody as I pass They're gonna wonder where I'm going And know when I'll be back as they wish the way their lives Working for the man I'll get some shit job When I need some cash If you know which drum I get to when I need a stash I'm gonna check out what we got on the far west coast California's good for so is Mexico So is Mexico I'm gonna live off the coast the most of both of us only TV A girlfriend I got a big old stack of photo that would get my friends Well, I think I'll sleep in every morning so far day Maybe screw my guitar, yeah, I live that way Oh, yeah. Are you my family?
the world.